creating one God Almighty Through your Holy Spirit Conceiving Christ the Son Jesus our Savior I believe in God our Father I believe in Christ the Son I believe in the Holy Spirit Our God is three in one I believe in the resurrection That we will rise again For I believe in the name of Jesus I'm judging I This is Daniel Teacher here, and I will be leading us in our prayer today. The scripture that I'm reading out of is from the book of James, chapter 1, verse 12. And it says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. I want to pray a prayer of, of encouragement and hope, because... I think many of us understand that we thought the COVID season would end much quicker, but it seems to be getting worse now in winter time. And including myself, I think all of us want us, want this to be over. I think I know it's a common theme, but as it says in this verse, when we persevere and stick through this season and when we come out of it, that we will be rewarded in heaven. And I think it's encouraging to know that God is with us every day. And he, he is fighting for our behalf and He wants what's best for us. Although we may not see it, let us have hope and faith in Him so that we may emerge out of this victorious. So let me pray for us. Father God, we thank You for this beautiful Sunday. We thank You for the provision and the blessings, our friends and family, the weather outside, the ability to go to school in the midst of a pandemic. 
the ability to work, the ability to praise. I pray for our ministry and for everyone that is watching this service. Would you instill in their heart a sense of hope and an expectation of great things to come, that this COVID season is just a period of time, is just a chapter, that it will pass eventually. We don't know when that, that day will come. We don't know when that will be. But until that day comes, God, may we stick to you. May we fix our eyes on you, God, and never lose hope and have faith that you will resolve it in its proper time. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, Jam. I'm Pastor Mike, and you are tuning in to Jam's Sunday service at Thanksgiving Church. Please turn with me to your Bibles, to the book of Genesis, chapter 47, verses 7 through 10. That's the book of Genesis, chapter 47, verses 7 through 10. Please follow along with me as I read. Then Joseph brought his father Jacob in and presented him before Pharaoh. After Jacob blessed Pharaoh, Pharaoh asked him, How old are you? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The years of my pilgrimage are a hundred and thirty. My years have been few and difficult, and they do not equal the years of the pilgrimage of my fathers. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from his presence. And the people of God say, Amen. All right, so we come back to Jacob and Joseph's story today. We see that all of Jacob and his family had finally reached the land of Goshen in Egypt, and all of the family was finally reunited with Joseph. And after a heartfelt reunion, Joseph then brings some of his brothers and his father Jacob to speak with Pharaoh. And when we finally see Jacob speak with Pharaoh, we see Jacob blessing Pharaoh. Afterwards, Pharaoh asks Jacob how old he is, to which Jacob truthfully answers that he is 130 years old, adding that although he is 130, he has lived a short life compared to his grandfather Abraham and his father Isaac and also that his journey, his life walk, has been a difficult one. With that, Jacob blesses Pharaoh, and they part ways. So that's our story. Let's talk about a bit about what it means. Now, I like to think that our story today is a bit overlooked in most cases. So I want to spend a little bit of time picking apart some of the details. At first glance, the idea that Jacob blesses Pharaoh feels innocent enough. But if you really think about it, it's actually kind of odd. Because from Jacob's perspective, he is the father of one of Pharaoh's subordinates. Jacob had come with a large number of people to live off of Pharaoh's land, practically for free. He was a freeloader, in a sense. There was nothing that Jacob could offer in a worldly sense that Pharaoh would consider of value that he already had. And this is important because blessings usually come from someone who has more authority to someone who has less authority. Blessings usually travel downward, almost always. Now, let us look at it from Pharaoh's perspective. In Egyptian culture, the title of Pharaoh is given to someone who is considered to be the embodiment of the sun god, Ra. Basically, Pharaoh was considered to be a god amongst the Egyptians. Furthermore, he was a ruler of the most powerful country in the entire world at the time. So from where Pharaoh was sitting, he was a god speaking to a mere man. And here is this mere man trying to bless him as if this mere man, Jacob, had more authority over Pharaoh, who is supposed to be a god. 
Now, we can for sure say that the idea of someone trying to bless Pharaoh at all might have been unfamiliar to him, to say the least. As a matter of fact, if Pharaoh had taken offense to Jacob's blessing, he certainly could have ordered his guards to throw Jacob and his family in jail immediately. So this is why, after Jacob blesses Pharaoh, Pharaoh asks this question. How old are you? Now, you and I might find that question to be a little odd because sometimes we like to tease people who are older for being older. But back in ancient culture, age had a different meaning. The older you were, the more worthy of respect and honor you were. So Pharaoh was curious of Jacob's age because he thought maybe Jacob was trying to bless him because he was super old and worthy of respect. But, uh, and this is interesting uh, because Pharaoh is looking at it from this perspective. Pharaoh was curious. He was trying to figure out, he was probably confused why Jacob was trying to bless him. And what follows from Jacob is what I believe to be a truly amazing and humble response. Immediately after saying that he was 130 years old, Jacob is quick to humble himself by saying that his life journey was difficult, that he did not achieve much honor or glory compared to his ancestors. And it is true that we have seen Abraham and Isaac go through their fair share of troubles. But if we try to compare it to what Jacob has gone through, there is clearly no contest. Jacob fought his brother even before he was born. He plotted and deceived his father and brother, and he ran away from his brother who, tried, who wanted to kill him. He never got to see his mother again after that. He labored under a trickster of an uncle for over 20 years. He lost his most precious wife. He lost his most precious son. Jacob's hardships were so many that it took half of the book of Genesis to tell his story. So what does this all mean? Well, let's break it down. If Pharaoh asking, how old are you? meant, by what authority are you trying to bless me? Jacob responding with, I'm 130 years old, but my years are few and have been difficult, is like the same thing as saying, Jacob is saying, I have no authority at all. And what's important to note today is this, Jacob in front of the most powerful man on earth, who was asking him, what authority are you blessing me with? Jacob is answering, I have no authority. My life is not anything to brag about. I am not particularly super old. I am not particularly super rich. There is no worldly standing, wealth, or wisdom that I can offer you. But here is my blessing. And this is an important message because all Jacob had to give was this blessing. And this is an odd thought because we know that Jacob was rich. We know that he had much experience. We know that perhaps he had a lot of wisdom that he could have imparted on Pharaoh. But instead, Jacob says, all of that is meaningless. I have nothing to offer you except this blessing, a blessing that no doubt would have come from the Most High God. So listen up today, Jam Fam. What makes you and I special, what gives us worth, what makes us worthy of love is not of this world. We have nothing to brag about that comes from within. We have nothing to show off to others except what God has given us. Surely, Jacob had things that he could have chosen to brag about. He was probably older. He was actually rich. And more importantly, in this context, he was the father of the son who saved the world. 
He was the father of, jo of Joseph, the man who architected this plan to save the world from famine. Yet Jacob takes no worldly credit from the world. He has no thing to say about his achievements. All he has is a blessing that God has given him in his heart to give to Pharaoh. And you and I are called to be just like this. We take no authority, we take no credit from the world. We even admit that there are so many others out there far more deserving of honor greater than ourselves, that there are people out there who are so much more accomplished than us. But what's most important is that you and I are here to give blessing in the name of the Lord and be a blessing in the name of the Lord. Jesus is why you and I stand tall. He is who we boast in. He is why we do what we do as Christians. Jesus defines who we are not the world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you teach us today through Jacob's story that though we may be experienced in years, though we may have much in possession and even uh, wisdom to give, Lord, none of that means anything without you. That our most valued possession is our Lord Jesus Christ. It is you, Father. Please, Will you give us the heart to only boast in you and not take pride in our worldly achievements? We end this service today by praying in the words you taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. That's our service today. Uh, we thank you for tuning in. And uh, we have some exciting announcements, actually. We have our winter retreat, online winter retreat, in collaboration with Sunland Ministries coming up in December 19th, that's a Saturday, all the way through December 21st on the Monday. So that is coming up really soon. We hope that you have signed up already and we are preparing this winter retreat for you uh, as we speak and also, uh, Jam is finally opening up our outdoor service on January 3rd in 2021. So you and I, we will finally get to meet and worship together face to face. And that is really exciting. Praise God. And your teachers and I, we are super excited and we are praying for the day that we will meet again. We hope that the Lord will give you a spirit of power and courage that we may be able to meet and not a spirit of fear. Until then, please stay safe and we'll see you next time.